guys, how's it going? So today I wanted to give you an update on these containers that we planted one week shy of two months ago. So this is a almost two month update. Uh, these are on the east side of our property. They get sun pretty much all day, except for the two on the very end, get some shade in the afternoon. This is the best year ever with these containers. Not only do I love the colors, but the infrastructure was set up properly this year. So we have individual water piped into each container. We have a brick pad right here that we had installed this spring so they're all level and pri uh, prior years we didn't have that so like the pots would kind of be tippy and they wouldn't all line up with each other uh, which you can get pretty close but i don't know it's just nice to have everything feel really solid also this year we have done the best job at preventative care in terms of budworm damage so in our area, we get the little green caterpillars that like to decimate our super tunias and super bells. So we have to spray BT, which is a totally natural spray. It does not hurt honeybees. It only kills that caterpillar. But if we do not spray our stuff or if we wait until the budworms appear, then we go weeks without blooms on our plants. And so it feels almost not worth it. It's like if you're not going to preventatively treat your plants, if you know you deal with that, then you're gonna go at least a month during the season not even seeing blooms on the plants that you went to all the trouble and effort of planting. So we started May 1st uh, spraying BT once a week and we're just going to maintain that schedule through the year because typically we have one big uh, kind of rash of budworms and then it lulls out in the summer, like the middle part of summer, and then it happens again. So we haven't noticed any budworm damage at all. Let me go over the plants really quick. We've got the Ipomea here. This is the Sweet Caroline sweetheart lime <laughs> and i do love this variety because the leaf structure is very clean so rather than being a very heavily lobed ipomea it's just this beautiful kind of heart-shaped leaf that looks just very tidy and clean and this one doesn't trail as vigorously as some of the other varieties so i'm not dealing with great big long tendrils i mean by the end of the season we might have a little bit more growth but some other varieties you have to trim all the time so that's been really nice and it's a really nice bright pop of lime green so it's just it brings a lot of light to the arrangement i think there is a centerpiece in here and that's one of the things i'm going to address today we're going to do some maintenance but there is a skyrocket penicetum look at it in there it's a little wee thing so it takes quite a bit of heat and quite a bit of time for the skyrockets to really take off i've noticed that in previous years as well um, but my super tunias are starting to grow in so much that i'm going to be cutting some of that out so I can allow more light and air to get to the center plants. We've got some coral colored geraniums and that has been really fun. I've only deadheaded these one time so far in two months. So today we're gonna go through and take out all the spent blooms. And then, like I said, the Super Tunia Bordeaux, not only is it growing down and filling in, but it's also growing into this interior here. So I'm gonna trim some of these interior branches off so that my plants don't get smothered. The other plants we have in here, this is a Lobularia. Remember it's Snow Princess or White Knight? <laughs> we'll put it on the screen. I can't remember, but I love it. It's incorporating itself just beautifully here and it's a really nice bright pop of white. And then on this side, we've got a Super Tunia Trailing Rose Veined. So it's almost like a mini version of the Bordeaux. This is the Bordeaux, the purple. Super Tunia Mini Rose Veined is this lighter pink one and it's a smaller bloom but look at how many flowers. And honestly, like even a week ago, it was even more full of flowers. I notice a ton of buds right now uh, going on. So it's just been a spectacular show. Uh, so I think toward the end of the season, they will take on a little bit more of a different look once the grasses start to put on a little bit of growth. Let me grab my Felcos, show you what we're gonna do for maintenance. First of all, let's get in here, kind of see what we're dealing with. I don't want to necessarily take off a ton, like all the way down to the, the crown of the plant, but look at that. See those tendrils were going all the way to the middle. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim that off like that. We'll take off any spent geranium blooms. That doesn't look great. Um, and by deadheading, it just encourages more blooms. The super tunias and the lobularia do not need to be deadheaded. So that's one maintenance step we do not need to worry about, which is awesome. But if you've noticed that your super tunias have started to, or super bells, those as well, if they've started to get a little leggy, that's kind of typical in the middle of summer. So you can go in and you can trim them back a little bit. In fact, let's move to a different pot real quick because I wanted to show you 
where I noticed some straggly growth. So see this one right here, it looks a little bit different in that the growth isn't all up here and really nice. We've got some kind of straggly stems that don't have as many blooms and I don't want that. So we're just gonna go in and cut those off. And what that does is it encourages more bushy growth and more blooms up top. And I could take this up even further if I needed to, but these just really don't need it. And the other thing we've been doing this year is we have been fertilizing once a week. So they get the Proven Winners continuous release plant food every Monday without fail. We haven't skipped a, a Monday, not all season. We haven't missed one. And typically I'll, I'll accidentally miss one because you know life happens and it gets a little bit busy. Um, but this is what consistency does to your plants. Consistent water, consistent, consistent fertilizer. I think I just said that I use continuous release fertilizer once a week, which is not true. I use the continuous release plant food mixed into the soil when I initially plant the flowers, and then I use the water soluble fertilizer on a weekly basis. The last time we mentioned the water soluble fertilizer, their online store sold out, um, and they have since restocked, so I just wanted to let you guys know that it is a hard one kind of to find at garden centers, um, so online is a really good resource if you can't find it at your local garden center, and they are running some kind of promo. I'm not sure the details, but if you buy fertilizer, you can get a Proven Winners t-shirt at some kind of super discounted rate. Anyway, we'll put the link to all that down below if you're interested. So let's head back to the first pot so I can finish up the maintenance on that one. So what I'm gonna continue doing is just basically trimming out any flowers or any of this Ipomoea that have kind of grown toward the center of the container. And while it seems sad to do that because you will be sacrificing some flowers, um, it's good for the planters because we want the geraniums to have room to breathe so that they can produce a lot of flowers. We want the grass to get light so that it can grow. And when you plant containers as thickly as I do, it's just something that has to happen because these plants are beasts, all of them, and they need kind of some space. I like all of the plants that I put in here and I probably wouldn't plant them any lighter, but just know that throughout the summer, it's not once and done planting and then you never have to touch them again. If you really want them to not get straggly, to really look good, a little trimming is a good idea. So I'm just gonna continue that here and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all done. So that loosened it up just a little bit in the center. You can see the grass a lot better. So that will have enough light to start growing and filling in the center section. And then also the geraniums have been freed up a little bit. So while it might look right after you get done trimming it, you'll be like, oh man, did I just ruin my container? You didn't. Um, it will allow the plants to do a whole lot better, all of them anyway. I mean, if I just had this whole thing full of super tunias, it wouldn't matter at all. But I want these things to look semi-individual. I want them to incorporate together, but I also want each plant to do really well. So I'm just gonna continue doing this all the way down the line. all trimmed and I love that I can actually see grasses like it it made the grasses appear in these pots which is really fun and it did sacrifice quite a lot of bloom I mean they were beautiful kind of spheres of color but we give these geraniums and this grass just even a week getting more light and these will fill in and be just absolutely beautiful but you can see we're creeping into the afternoon hours and these two containers on this end just get a little bit more shade um, and I just like to have them all planted the same that's my preference so I plant them the same anyway they just don't perform as well as the ones that get sun all day long. And that's okay. At least they're kind of in the same color family and they look cohesive and that's, that means more to me. Uh, but just keep that in mind if you're planting something along these lines where you kind of want things to perform the same. They really do need the same kind of light. Um, it looks like in this one right here, I'm gonna apply some bug and slug killer. I'm not sure this was, we did have a small hailstorm, but it, I can't imagine that this one would show damage and none of the other ones would. So I think it's insects. Um, so I'm gonna apply some bug and slug killer just to the soil around in this container. Um, I didn't really see any issues with any of the other ones along here, so that's really great. Um, but let's go to the first one that's in sun. So you can see what it looks like. 
because you can just really see the grass in here. I mean, the poor things were just so engulfed by supertunias, and you can see I just cut this out, this whole thing, and this will re rebound as well. The supertunias will kind of flush back out, and then these geraniums will have room to grow and such. So I just think that they're gonna be a lot happier. So really the rule of thumb, when you're going in midsummer to give your planters a haircut, you might have a container situation like I do here. Maybe you have a hanging basket. You don't wanna take, I think it's a 20% rule. You don't wanna take a lot more than 20% off the plant. I've done more in the past, depending on what they look like. But you wanna leave some leaves because the leaves are what soak in the sunshine, which creates energy for the plant to grow. Um, so you don't wanna to do too severe of a cutback but it really can recharge your planter. It'll look a little sad for a week or two while it's rebounding, but just cut it back, fertilize it, and then you'll enjoy your planter so much more for the rest of the season. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little update. I am thrilled with how these containers are doing. I'm just loving it, and we'll hope to give you updates later on after these things have a chance to recuperate. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.